The flickering light of tallow candles cast long shadows across the walls of Cecil's study. Maps and documents littered every available surface, a testament to the frantic research that had consumed the group for the past three days. Thomas Blackwood stood before the largest map, his eyes tracing the web of red strings that connected various locations across London and beyond. It doesn't make any sense, he muttered, running a hand through his dishevelled hair. If Judas has agents throughout the city, why haven't they made another move? Dr. John Dee looked up from the ancient tome he was studying, his eyes weary but alert. Perhaps they're regrouping, licking their wounds after our encounter in the tower, or... Or they're planning something big, Christopher Marlowe finished, his voice grim. The playwright turned spy has spent the last days tapping into his network of informants, trying to piece together Judas's next move. Sir Robert Cecil, who had been pacing the room, stopped abruptly. We can't afford to wait and find out. Every moment we delay gives Judas more time to gather the remaining pieces of silver. Blackwood nodded, feeling the weight of the single silver coin in his pocket. Since the Battle of the Tower, he had been unable to tap into the coin's power again, despite hours of attempting to recreate the connection he'd felt in that moment of crisis. "'What about the angels?' Blackwood asked, turning to Dee. "'Have you had any success in contacting them?' The old alchemist shook his head. "'I'm afraid not. It seems the veil between worlds has thickened since our last encounter. They warned us this might happen.' that their ability to intervene directly would be limited. 